Have you heard about something called UPnP? Would you like to know how to safely use UPnP with PFSense? Would you rather look at this than having to deal with writing firewall rules? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to do this using PFSense. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to use UPnP or Universal Plug and Play with PFSense. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbytes.withronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Now here's what we're going to be talking in that video, and that's how to use UPnP or Universal Plug and Play with PFSense. First, we're going to talk about what is Universal Plug and Play. Then we'll go over how to get it enabled, and then how to restrict access or just not have the wild, wild west on your hands. You've probably seen mentions to UPnP or Universal Plug and Play when you're in your home router or firewall. Normally, this is something that you probably won't ever deal with, but here's where it comes in handy. Unless you are very comfortable with writing firewall rules or understand how to write them, this is something that is potentially going to be very helpful because it allows the device that needs inbound access, as far as from the internet in, to automatically tell the firewall, hey, this is what I need. Because when you start writing outbound rules, which is probably a little more common, those are a little more straightforward. Inbound can be a little challenging depending on the firewall. Now, normally UPnP is something I don't enable. It potentially can be a security risk because here's the challenge. In most systems, you just have a checkbox that says enable UPnP. Well, that's kind of bad because you don't want every device on the network requesting its own firewall rules. I want to be able to kind of cherry pick what's going on because not everybody needs it. And especially if there was a bug in the firmware, it could signal something to the firewall. The firewall is going to say, hey, OK, I've got UPnP turned on. Let's you know go ahead and set up those rules. Well, that's something you really don't want to do. Now, this is where PFSense has really got a very straightforward way of doing it. Well, now we're in the console or web portal, whatever you want to call it, for PFSense. To get universal plug and play set up is really straightforward. Now, I've actually got my Bitcoin miner sitting out here, and it's the device that's really complaining about wanting to have universal plug and play. As you can see, now it's it's got something where it's actually replicating the blockchain. This is a good indication there's a problem. Normally, I'm at about 30 of 32, sometimes 32 of 32, but it's also complaining only inbound connections detected. It's telling me to open up a certain port and the rules to the future bit device. Well, I'm just getting into PFSense, so writing firewall rules, because I've actually got a another firewall beyond this one, I'm not a fan necessarily of doing that unless we have to. So what we'll do, and remember the IP address here, that's going to be important here in just a second. So first, what we want to go do is I don't just want to enable it for everything. I want to have a known quantity of what to do. So first, we're going to go over here to status DHCP leases, and we'll go down here to where you see future bit. And this is just one example. I mean, you, this is just to walk through what you're thinking about. Now, there's two pluses. We want to go to the plus on the left for static mapping. I was hoping to do a DHCP reservation, but this is close to it. This is the way PFSense does it, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. So at this point, it's already copied over the MAC address, so that's good. It copied over the host name. Okay, we can deal with that. So what we want to do is just give it an address here and I've moved my DHCP range to where anything below 100 is going to be in the static pool. So that's fine. We've got that. We're going to leave the host name alone. Don't really need a description. And all these settings are going to come a part of the DHCP global settings on the server. We're not going to see it says the default is going to be used. So again, we don't have to really worry about anything. Dynamic DNS is a whole nother conversation. When we get to the point of wanting to force out clock time, then this is all things we're going to be handling in future videos. So we'll click save. We're going to have to apply changes. So that's fine. We'll click apply changes. At that point, we're not, well, see, it says static. It says, and it's not static ARP, so it's not really showing us that, but it tells us that we've got a static mapping. So we'll go over here to our Apollo device, and I'm going to restart the node, and then that way it's going to come up on the new address. And this is going to take just a second, so we'll be right back once it's finished. 
Well, things restarted a little quicker than I thought they would. I was thinking restart in term, or reboot in terms of the way I normally bring it up, and this time it came through pretty quick. So it's on its new address, and it's the process of restarting, so they, the blockchain connections are, are getting there. It's, it's going to build back up, but it's not going to get to a full one. So what we'll do is we'll go over here. That one is not going to be there anymore, so we'll close that tab out. So what we'll do is we will go to Services. We'll go down here to UPnP, and we're going to enable... UPnP and we are going to allow UPnP port mapping. Now you've got a, a NAT PNP and it says for Apple compatible systems at this point everything that I've read with my particular situation says we want UPnP. So the external interface is WAN, local interface is LAN, okay. I'm not going to change any of those other settings, don't really need to. We will click save so let's go see here if we see any difference i'm going to refresh this just to see if it's picking up on it and it may take it a second here let's okay and we also want to make sure we log packets because this is going to be something that's going to tell us if things are working the way we think they should now once you've got upnp enabled it may take some time before you start seeing anything so you can always watch to see what's going on by status upnp and as it starts being used then you will see any activity there and once you become a little more familiar with what's going on you can actually go do diagnostics packet capture and you can actually look at that specific traffic that's a little more advanced but the, but the functionality is there so you don't have to immediately resort to going into the command line and looking at it that way i'm showing you how to get it up and running at a very basic level and how to look at the logs well we don't want to have everything being able to use PNP unless that's what we want to have happen. So we can go under services, UPnP, then we will tell it to deny access by default. Now, when we do that, we're just shutting down the service we started. But here's how you get around that. What we can do is we'll go down here under UPnP access list and we'll say allow. And I'm going to give it the whole range here because this right now, we're not quite sure what the ports that are going to be used are involved. So we want to give it all the range of what they call the non-privileged ports and we're locking it down to a specific address which is where i showed you earlier that we were setting up i don't want to call it a dc reservation but it's a, D, a dhcp static ip mapping and that way we we're getting some flexibility here over time you can be able to address that and then click on save then what you'll want to do is go under status upnp and you should start seeing some access there again it may not happen right away it just depends on how things are working but this shows you a way to get upnp up and running with a minimum of hassle if you watched until this part of the video thank you i really appreciate that because i'm just trying to document my journey of what i'm learning with all the different technologies that are out there for smart home use and help you avoid some of the pitfalls that i've run into now if you've gotten to this point and upnp is still not playing nice there's a few things that i'm going to show you to go through that will either help get it working or at least give you some ammunition to go to one or more vendors or help forums for assistance. So let's switch over here to our trusty Intel NUC. First thing you can try, and this is not 100%, but let's face it, sometimes services get a little hung up. And that's go over here to UPnP in your router. In my case, I'm using PFSense, but the rest of this should be pretty much the case. You can look at the logs to see what's going on, but sometimes the, the brute force method is gonna be the best. So you can go up here and disable UPnP, save it, and if this doesn't seem to help get it working, then turn it back off and reboot PFSense. Yes, you should be able to get this working without having to restart, but let's face it, sometimes if it comes up clean, there's not something dangling out there. If that still doesn't work, then go over to your device and see if you can toggle off UPnP. If not, then we're going to go to the next step. So I'm going to go over here to get my lease information. And you can see I've got several devices back here that have, I'll call them DHCP reservations. The PFSense calls them static. And if you want to learn more about that, please reach out to me. I'll be happy to do a video on that. In fact, I've got one planned. It just, I'll push it up higher in the list. So we'll want to go through and make sure we've got the right address. So in this case, the device in question has got that IP address. Now with PFSense, 
you've got several different ways to do a packet capture. And that's what we need to see is what's going on. Because if you're having a problem, nothing else makes sense. This will help others that can't get to your network or get into your network, which you really don't want them to, being able to see what's going on. So we'll go over here, diagnostics, packet capture. Now you can do packet capture directly on PFSense and then download the file. Looking at it on PFSense to me hasn't really told me that much. And you want to make sure you've got SSH turned up if you want to do this next trick. Now, I'm going to show you a way with Wireshark to do some capturing and your device is going to have to support this. We're going to log in over SSH and PFSense does support it. So we'll go down here to SSH and I've already got the address entered for that it doesn't remember the password because that's a good thing so i'll enter the password capture and remote interface i'm going to put re1 now that's something unique to pfsense and let's make sure that i'm on the right connection you normally should never do this over wireless but i'm gonna have to in this case and then we will click on actually before we click let's do this i need to grab my smartphone and i'm going to turn off the device i've got it on a smart outlet so i can make things a little bit easier because we want to catch it as it comes up okay so we've got it turned off and we will click start and then i'll turn it back on because i want to catch the startup sequence and we can always like i said this is capturing a lot of information it's easy like i said filter down and then you can back back out where if you're too restrictive and then what we can do is a display filter now display filters are nice in that you can when you do it right and i'm not doing it right apparently there's enough going on here right now that that would explain why we're not seeing a whole lot and i've just taken the filter off so if we do 10.0.3.60 enter now it's going to go through and you see parsing on the bottom. So the display filter is giving you a view of what's going on. So we're going to see what's going on here. And you'll see things like Bitcoin. It's, it's giving us everything that's going on. So that says the device is, is up and running. Now, if we try to look for UPnP, uh, you see when the line's red, it's not telling us it's telling us it doesn't really know anything, so we do SSDP. SSDP actually covers UPnP. We'll go through and we can at least see that there is activity going on. And it goes to a .250 address by default. See, now there is where our device is talking. That's the 10.0.3.60. It's sending the full request out. Okay. There's where the firewall is responding back. But in my case, the device the that i'm trying to modify or try trying to get upmp to work with isn't seeming to respond so this is where having the capture of what's going on is very handy because this way we can see okay here's the request going out the firewall responds back because it should be usually the next packet or very close after that so it's we're just going to have to do some troubleshooting this may involve going into the forums because when i see when i go into pfsense it's like it's not seeing anything so there either i found a bug or there's something maybe i've got to go back to the vendor of the device that i'm trying to have talk P upnp to the firewall but anyway this gives you an idea of some additional troubleshooting you can do not going to be a quick fix but at least it gives you information that you can take to others who may be able to see what's going on and help you get a little bit closer if you're watching this on youtube you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that youtube thinks you might be interested in if this video helps you or provides value please click on the like button thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please click on subscribe and enable notifications we'll see you in the next episode thanks for watching